names because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to get you all to. I understand. I, I, I understand, brother. All right. So now I saw this organization and, and one of the dudes, he was wearing, a, uh, you know, he was wearing that daishiki stuff. But he also, it was a while ago now. This was probably about a few um, a few <laughs> years ago. I know who you're talking about, but go ahead. <laughs> he, it was a few years ago and he had a some some dude from Ghana reading you know i guess you y'all call that camp right like when y'all out on the speed and that's camp yeah right? okay. okay so they were doing a camp and he had a ghanaian reading and he was like so proud he was like yeah you know this is our brother here from from ghana and stuff like that while he had his little daishiki on and he had this ghanaian reading so my question is right um if because I, I know y'all invite everybody to the passover and stuff like that into your cookout what I don't know if this individual, if that got if that guy from Ghana is still in their organization or not. Like I said, it was it was a few years ago. But if they were to come to your Passover, how would you be able to assess that situation within that little bit of time? I would say, you know, for him to enter, because anybody who comes through that we don't know, we ask them who their father is. You know what I'm saying? So that's how uh, that's how that would go. But you know what? I won't go any further than that unless okay. unless you want to know because you know what I'm saying. I, I I could I could break down why he's with that, why he's in that dashiki, and why he chose to have a brother from Ghana with him. Yeah, I, but like he was just he was real proud of it. Like you know, yeah, he's from Ghana and stuff like. And like that's when I I started getting confused when I saw that, and then I had to call y'all about that. And, and listen, and that's not to say that there's not no Israelites that's in Ghana, but the reason as to why he's so accepting. All right, I, I, I'm gonna do it. Go, do me a favor, man. Pull, pull, me, pull me up Luke the 17th chapter. I, I want to teach you a very valuable lesson about uh, fake Israelites. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, you know, this, it was, uh, Luke 16, 16. I'm sorry. I'm usually pretty on point with this one. Aha. Here we go. You ready for this brother? I, I, I'm, I'm about to break down. You, you're going to understand your confusion now. Now you're not going to be able to be confused the next time you see that you're going to be able to identify the problem. You ready? All right. This is Luke, the 16th chapter, and it says, And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. In this parable, the rich man is the most high. The steward is a poor leader, is somebody who's not fit for the position, who's wasting the most high's goods. The goods is the, the congregation, the work. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Meaning like the Lord is trying to remove him from this position, trying to fire him. You're, 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 you're messing up. I'm going to replace you, which I want everybody to know anybody can be replaced in this work. You understand? Everybody's expendable. Don't, nobody made it until we made it. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord hath taken away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. You know, they making some money in that position. You know what I'm saying? So as a result from them making money, they don't want to go and work construction or beg or, you know, X, Y, Z. They want to know how is it that I'm going to be able to keep these people. Verse four, I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. He's going to say how he's going to get people to still follow him. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors. We're all debtors to the most high. We all owe. And said unto the first, how much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, an hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Let me ask you something. You want to pay a hundred or you want to pay 50 if you owe some money? Uh, I mean, I'd rather pay the 50, but right. if I pay the 50, right? Right, right. Because it's easier. 
Right. Let's keep reading. Let's go a little more. Now, I know I know you being a man who wants to serve the Lord. You were about to say, but, you know, if it's for the Lord, I'm going to give what I really owe. I know because you you a sincere man. You know what right. I'm saying? But the carnality is, no, nah, I don't want to pay that 400. Take 50. Right. Right. So let's keep going. Then he said to another. And how much owest thou? And he said, an hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill and write four score. So four score is is uh four twenties. You know, we're talking about eight, two, four, six, eight, eighty dollars. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So now he's paying less. Now, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. See, the children of light, we don't know how to scam and hustle. We, 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 we honest. We sincere. We, we want to tell you the truth. The children of the world, though, they want to hustle. They want to scheme. So you know what's okay. Do you know how much flack? Captain Tazaria got for not letting that little African boy saying he couldn't come to the cookout. You know, that video had over a million views. You know, you know, like that was a viral video. Do you know how many people to this day still bring up that he would not feed the African child? I think I think that's wonderful. Fuck them. Do you think if if we accepted Hamites in Africa, do you think we'd have that much beef with the conscious community and Sanetta? No. Nah. Because that's writing down four score instead of paying the hundred. Mm. You understand? That's yeah. that's writing down fifty instead of paying the hundred. Let, let me let me hip you to something. There's a religion for any sin you want to commit. You want to sell crack? Go be a Muslim. You can sell you can sell crack, get arrested, become a Muslim for protection, and then now you come home and you sell crack to everybody who don't got a beard. For real. Well, maybe too many of y'all, you understand, crack ain't as big. Uh, fentanyl, you understand, y'all get arrested selling Fetty, you come home, and now, now you sell Fetty to anybody without a beard. If you want to if you wanna smoke weed, go be a Rasta. You know, go I and I, right? That's, that's what y'all are going to do. If, if you want to, you know, sexually abused children go be a catholic they ran the largest you know child abuse ring on the planet you go be a catholic priest and then they'll just move you around when you get caught pope will protect you you want to be any wicked thing under the sun just go be a christian you know what i'm saying you could be a drug dealer you wear a jesus piece you know what i'm saying you want to be an adulteress you know what i'm saying you you want to you want to be a lgbt member td jakes the power bottom he got you you know what I'm saying? And guess what? There is a fake Israelite group for any sin you want to commit. If you want to be whitewashed, you understand? If you want to be integrated into society and be an acceptable Israelite, go join IUIC. They believe in monogamy. They're they're all, you know, understand, deputized and half of them are police. Dead as hell. Yeah, brother, you said it. You understand? You wanna, you want, you wanna, you wanna get high, brother. You you can go join an Israelite group that says you can smoke weed. You wanna wear a dashiki? Go join that group that that cat was talking about because they wanna be acceptable. They wanna be palatable. They wanna get along. My God's a man at war, so I'm at war with all of you. Will I be polite? Yes. Will I be respectable? Yes. I won't break peace unless peace is broken. All right. I will look at all of you as brothers and sisters. I ain't looking at none of you as men of God. I ain't looking at none of you as priests and prophets ever in life. And I will battle all of you until you're in here or you're destroyed.